What's up, YouTube? So, Kalen DeBoer is not the answer for Alabama football. Guys, he's taking the Mount Rushmore of the division, being the SEC, and turning Nick Saban's program into the Titanic. Guys, mark my word. I promise you, he is not the future. He is not going to be the Alabama coach long. What's up, guys? I'm Corey, and welcome to my channel, Let's Talk With Corey. If this is your first time tuning in, hit that subscribe button. But before we get started, wherever you are in the world today, I mean wherever you are in the world today, I really do hope you're having a great day. Now, guys, my channel is about people, places, and things. Welcome to Let's Talk With Corey. And guys, this time, we're talking about Kalen DeBoer. Yeah, the guy that wears the Walmart-style Alabama shirts. But guess what? This is not about his fashion statements, but it has a whole lot to do with his coaching style and who he has running his defense. Alabama looks like a shadow, a shell, a ghost of itself. No one has seen anything like this. Being an Alabama fan like me, it hurts. It stings because, guys, this guy is not the answer. Have you seen any of his pressers, post-game pressers? It's almost like we were winning by 20. But instead, we only won by two yesterday. Guys, we are sliding down the into the abyss. And this is not Bama football. And this article that I'm going to cut away and read, I'm not going to read it in entirety, but Goodman, Goodman, the article who wrote this article about his opinion about Alabama's coach, Kalen DeBoer, and what has happened to Alabama since this man gets $10 million a year. He hadn't earned a single penny of it yet. Yeah, guys, I'm passionate because this is our team. For those who have been lifelong Alabama fans like I have since I was a kid. And yes, I understand Nick Saban is gone. But this guy is not the answer. He's not the answer and he's not the future for Alabama. Not at all. And guess what? Oh, yeah. I bet you behind some closed doors, there's some whispers. But when those whispers become booze like it was yesterday, when we almost gave the game away, I'm sorry. I mean, South Carolina basically played themselves out of a win. And we just got lucky to win that game two unranked teams in two weeks. What's going to happen when we get to Tennessee next week? I don't even want to say. Let's just say this. Who's going to be holding the cigars? Guys, follow along with me as I cut away to read this article. Listen okay, guys, this is AL.com, Alabama.com. Goodman says, Alabama doesn't know how to play for its coach. I really don't like that title. I would have said Alabama struggles with its new coach. But anyway, but that's not the title. It says Alabama doesn't know how to play for his new coach and this article is coming again from al.com and i'll leave a link fittingly alabama coach kalen DeBoer decided to go with a black t-shirt for his brush with death on saturday against south carolina what is wrong with this team that once looked so good against georgia is it arrogance as nick saban suggested on espn college game day is it poor preparation by the coaching staff or is Alabama just another Florida State without Saban as the coach seriously what is going what is it going to take for Saban to come out of retirement maybe he doesn't even need to be the head coach maybe he can just be a part-time defensive coordinator says Goodman here's an idea just fire current defensive coordinator Kane Womack before Monday and let Saban work two days a week. Saban is already on the payroll. It wouldn't exactly be charity work. There is so much to question after Alabama's 27-25 victory over South Carolina. Where to even begin? For those few Alabama fans still paying attention to the football team this season, we'll try to understand it together. Alabama's inexplicable cratering since the first half against Georgia is one of college football's biggest stories. 
this team is getting worse and worse since then and until further notice, the Crimson Tide shouldn't be considered a contender for the playoffs. Hey, we don't look good enough to be in the SEC championship game at this point. Um, that's going to sting. But Alabama's fall is like nothing we've seen. I agree. Last week, it was the 40-35 to loss to Vanderbilt. And this week, the Tide played even worse at home. Saban retired after the 2023 season, but it's not like he left the team in disarray. This is all on new guy DeBoer, who dresses for games like he shops at Walmart for clothes and his defensive game plans too. And why does everything that comes out of DeBoer's mouth suddenly sounds like gibberish? There are just so many times where we talk about finding a way to win, he said after the game, huh? Excuse me? More like Alabama finds so many ways to nearly lose. If you've ever seen someone walk into a glass door, that's basically what's happened to Alabama with under two minutes to go in the first half. And things didn't get any better after that. Alabama didn't win so much as South Carolina found ways to blow it. First, it was South Carolina quarterback Sellers fumbling in the third quarter. Then South Carolina missed a field goal and attempt to take the lead. And then South Carolina missed a two-point conversion to tie. And then the Gamecocks failed to get it done after recovering an onside kick. Alabama should be thanking the heavens and some of those questionable calls too. South Carolina kicker Alex Herrera missed a 50-yard field goal to give the Gamecocks the lead with 6.08 left on the clock. Alabama got so lucky. It was a holding call by South Carolina early in the drive that saved the tie. Did Greg, Greg Sankey make a call? Nice try, Greg. Certainly the SEC commissioner knows at this point that his league has no business being represented by four teams in the college football playoff. I know that ESPN is really going to make a case for Alabama to get into the college football playoff, but let's be honest here. Alabama looks like it might be good enough to make the Music City Bowl. Back it back to Nashville, baby. Maybe Alabama can get a rematch with Vandy. The Boar's team is regressing week to week. Why? I keep calling him a good coach, but I'm starting to have serious doubts. Let's start with the most basic of things. Alabama was supposed to come into this game against South Carolina supremely motivated after the loss to Vandy. After taking its initial 14-point lead against South Carolina, Alabama allowed a touchdown, a safety, and then a field goal faster than a frat bro can chug a beer. Why is quarterback Jalen Milrow getting worse? Why is safety Malachi Moore playing like a child? Why does DeBoer continue to wear t-shirts and hoodies during games? For many, it's all related. Alabama's lack of discipline and its tendency to make simple mistakes in key moments are all characteristics of an untucked and disheveled team going backwards. When Milro threw his touchdown with 1.54 seconds left in the fourth quarter, my first thought was that Alabama scored with too much time on the clock. South Carolina steamrolled its way down the field and countered with ease, but then quarterback Sellers missed a wide open receiver in the end zone on a failed two-point conversion. Alabama wasn't even tough enough to get anywhere near the ensuing onside. Okay, game. guys, you heard what it was said in the Goodman article from Alabama or AL.com. And was he spot on in your opinion? What's your thoughts? I mean, whether you're Alabama, let's just say focus first on if you're an Alabama fan, you're highly disappointed in this team and how this team has been playing. And again, Alabama has athletes. These guys are mostly four or five star athletes. So a lot of this fall on the on the shoulders of the coaching staff to get these guys ready week to week. The vision defense is not working. So Womack, Kane Womack, or whatever your name is, that it's just not working. These guys look lost. And I know there's a lot of young guys that's on the field, but this just simply it just looks out of character. Lack of discipline. Look at all the penalties. There's just so much going on. You just can't really just focus on one issue. Alabama doesn't run the ball well. 
We're not running the ball enough. That safety that, that South Carolina got because Milro basically just threw the ball, basically trying to throw the ball away and end up getting a safety. You run, run the ball, get out of the hole. But guys, I'm not going to speak too much on this. Tennessee's coming up next week. <laughs> I just hope it's not much of more of the same of what we're getting. But the article was really good. I didn't, I didn't read it in its entirety. I'll leave a link for you guys. But understand this. If you're not an Alabama fan, you're loving it. Okay? Because for the first time in seems like forever, Alabama is almost at the bottom of the barrel in, this, in the conference that it do has dominated for so long. So you guys leave a comment. What's your thoughts about uh, uh, Kalen DeBoer? I mean, do you think this guy deserves to get through this first year? Of course, $10 million a year is a lot of money. So I've even said to my friends and others around me that they're not going to let this guy go because they're going to owe him like $90 million or $100 million if they fire him. But they can force some changes around him, especially at the, on the defensive side of the of the ball in terms of the, the defensive coordinator. You can make some adjustments there. Nick Saban is not coming from coming back to save us. Okay. And so I just believe in my personal opinion, and my opinion don't mean nothing, but no, but to me, it means a lot. I do not think this man is going to be the future for Alabama, especially at the head coach. I think what we're going to do is we're going to tolerate him. And then if nothing happens, then we just got to deal with it until you know, he's gotten, you know, a portion, a quarter of a, or maybe a third of what's owed to him and then send him packing. But, all right, let's, let me be a little optimistic. Okay. So it's hard. It's really hard, but let's be a little optimistic. He could turn this thing around. I don't know how, but that's a possibility. But the, but, but right now it doesn't look good. Uh, especially for us and it doesn't look good I mean look at Jalen Milrow's face everybody looks like they're just where are we is this a this is like a a, a, day, a a daily nightmare that you just can't wake up from I know we as fans we don't like it we just want to see Alabama get to Alabama ball and if you want to call it the Nick Saban way call it whatever you want to call it we just want to see better on the field in terms of play and execution less penalties I mean, you know, we want to see Alabama run the ball better. We want to get off the field on third downs. Simple things. Sounds easy, but obviously it's extremely hard for that coaching staff. Hey, guys, you leave a comment. What's your thoughts? And as always, thanks for the pull-up. Roll Tide. Until the next time, let's talk with Corey. Let's talk with Corey, y'all.